I had brought a dozen of the finest red roses for the occasion. I joked to the cashier that they were the very same crimson as freshly spilled blood. She must have thought me weird, but I needed to get my sweetheart these. They were her favourite. Though silly me, I had left them on the passenger seats of the car when I had first gotten to the door. I hurried back to fetch them, using my briefcase as a temporary umbrella to protect myself from the rain that was coming down in sheets. I scowled as I grabbed the bouquet and made the return trip through the rain to the door. She kept the path and the doorway immaculate. Even the window boxes and planters outside were perfectly manicured. This was something I loved about her so much. She loved order as much as I did. Musing to myself, I pictured some nice topiary around the garden and made a mental note to talk to her about that in the morning. It was too late tonight and she would be wanting her beauty sleep. Not that she needed it. I tried the door handle and it wasn't locked. I kept telling her she should lock it before she went to bed, but I was glad for once that I didn't need to find the spare key that was under the ceramic Buddha which guarded the entrance. I opened the door quietly. There was the welcome mat, which stated quite clearly that strangers were just friends they had not yet met. I smiled again and wiped my feet. I didn't want to leave a mess on the pale carpets which covered the downstairs hall and vast open plan lounge. She had picked out tasteful enough decor, not my style. It was there before I met her, of course, and we hadn't had chance to have a conversation about changing it. We had so many other things to plan, and to be honest, I wasn't going to bring it up. If it kept her happy, then I was happy too. She liked her boots, all arranged neatly by the door, including those boots. The boots she had been wearing when I had first seen her in the bar. They were long and black, over her knees finishing just below her latex skirt. She had kept these by the door to tease me. I picked one up and inhaled it deeply. I could feel the churning in the pit of my stomach. I loved the way she made me feel and the way the corner of her mouth formed that grin. I knew she felt the same. I thought about picking them up there and then. I'd rush upstairs and ask her to put them on. I loved the way they looked on her legs. I'd even ask her if she wanted to use the handcuffs we kept in the oak bedside table next to her bed. I loved these games. But they would wait for now. I put the boot back, making sure they were lined up neatly next to her ankle boots on the rack. These showed the other side of her, brown and conservative. She wore those when she was at work in the library. She could be the epitome of proper. How she made me laugh when she put on that veneer. I looked at my feet. My own boots were filthy still, even after wiping them. There was thick, wet mud coagulating on the sole that I had dragged in from the path outside. She would have hated these. She was such a clean freak. I smiled at that choice of word. I didn't want to leave footprints on her lovely carpets. I nodded and reached down to push the brown Chelsea boots off my feet and pick them up, making sure to place them as near to the patent leather thigh highs I loved so much. I nodded with satisfaction for not disturbing her things too much. I stood up again and headed across the hall to the kitchen, just pausing for a moment more to take in those boots again, grinning broadly. I hoped she'd gotten in my favourite beer. I dropped so many hints and really fancied a cold beer before I headed upstairs to see her. Just like the rest of the house, the kitchen was pristine and in perfect order. Everything had its place. I loved how she kept everything so perfect. I kind of hoped she had just left something out of place, some little detail not quite right, so I could hang off her to the bed and spank her. She was naughty too. That would have been just like her. She often went to bed early, so I'd been creeping around the best I could. This had made it easier since I removed my boots, but when I caught my toe on the corner of the kitchen island, I opened my mouth to scream, but shut it immediately bottling up the anger inside and swearing in my head furiously. If I had been back in my own apartment, I would have turned the air blue and the neighbours would have been knocking on the walls. I composed myself as best as I could, still hopping a little as I opened the door of the old-fashioned style fridge. 
It was eggshell blue with brightly polished chrome. Inside the brightly lit fridge, everything was, of course, perfectly in its place, and smack bang in the centre of the middle shelf, a six pack of my favourite beer. And there it was, her one little error. There was one removed. She'd had one of those beers herself, that naughty girl. She was going to get punished for that. I stopped for a second and reached for the beer, but paused and stood back up straight. I shook my head. A beer could wait until after we had our perfect night together. I looked at the blood-red roses on the counter. They could wait too until we'd done. I managed to keep quiet as I crept upstairs. I wanted to leave the surprise until the very last second. It worked. She didn't wake up until the latch of the bedroom door clicked. You should have seen the look on her face as she saw me. Who the hell are you? She screamed as she tried to back away, pressing herself up against the headboard. She wasn't going to get away from me. The cleaner found her body the next day, handcuffed spread eagled, face down on the bed. She'd struggled so much that I had unfortunately had to resort to the bottle of chloroform I kept in my jacket. I'd left my mark though, and carved the word naughty onto her bark with my penknife. It was what she deserved. I told you I would punish her. The police found my empty beer bottle in the trash. I'd sat quietly after we had enjoyed our evening, making sure to clean up after myself. She would have appreciated that. I did owe her that much. We had so much fun that I had made sure to put those blood-red roses in a vintage vase next to the bed. They also noticed that one of her thigh-high boots was missing. It sits in pride of place in my growing collection.